to Cool Seminary Tutorials. Hi, I'm Professor Wendy. I'm excited to say that this video is part of a series. The series is a collection of useful quotes from John Wesley, the founder of Methodism. Whether or not you agree with Wesley, these quotes will help you to understand him and why he has had such a great impact on so many for more than two centuries. These collections of quotes are not comprehensive, otherwise the videos would be way too long but they are representative of Wesley's thinking. Some of you may be aware of even better quotes, so let me also invite suggestions from you about additional John Wesley quotes. Today let's take a look at some key John Wesley quotes about the nature of Christian faith. To begin, how did John Wesley define faith? Quote, faith is a divine evidence and conviction not only that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, but also that Christ loved me and gave himself for me. It is by this faith that we receive Christ, that we receive him in all his offices as our prophet, priest, and king. It is by this that he has made of God unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Wesley discussed three essential aspects of the divine evidence and conviction of faith. Quote, what is that faith whereby we are sanctified, saved from sin, and perfected in love? It is a divine evidence and conviction, first, that God has promised it in the Holy Scripture. Secondly, that what God has promised he is able to perform. Thirdly, that he is able to do it now. And why not? What is the source of faith, and who are the recipients? Faith is the gift of God. No man is able to work it in himself. It is a work of omnipotence. It requires no less power thus to quicken a dead soul than to raise a body that lies in the grave. It is a new creation. It is the free gift of God, which he bestows not on those who are worthy of his favor, not on such as are previously holy and so fit to be crowned with the blessings of God's goodness, but on the ungodly and unholy, on those who till that hour were fit only for everlasting destruction, those in whom there was no good thing and whose only plea was, God be merciful to me a sinner. His pardoning mercy supposes nothing in us but a sense of mere sin and misery, and to all who see and feel and own their wants, and their utter inability to remove them. God freely gives faith. Do all Christians have this faith? And what is its fruit? Question, have all true Christians this faith? May not a man be justified and not know it? Answer, that all true Christians have this faith, even such a faith as implies an assurance of God's love, appears from numerous places in Scripture, and that no man can be justified and not know it appears from the very nature of things. For faith after repentance is ease after pain, rest after toil, light after darkness, and from the immediate as well as distant fruits. Question. What are the immediate fruits of justifying faith? Answer. Peace, joy, love, power over all outward sin, and power to keep down all inward sin. What is the relationship between faith and good works? Question. Are works necessary to the continuance of faith? Answer. Without a doubt, for a man may forfeit the gift of God either by sins of omission or commission. Question. Can faith be lost but for want of works? Answer. It cannot but through disobedience. Question. How is faith made perfect by works? Answer. The more we exert our faith, the more it is increased. To him that has, much more is given. How is faith made personal and transformational in a true Christian? Quote, Only beware, you do not deceive your own soul, with regard to the nature of this faith. It is not, as some have fondly conceived, a bare assent to the truth of the Bible, of the articles of our creed, or of all that is contained in the Old and New Testament. The devils believe this, as well as I or you, and yet they are devils still. But it is, over and above all this, a sure trust in the mercy of God, 
through Christ Jesus. It is a confidence in a pardoning God. It is a divine evidence or conviction that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing to them their former trespasses, and, in particular, that the Son of God has loved me and given himself for me, and that I, even I, am now reconciled to God by the blood of the cross. What role does faith play in the continuing work of sanctification in a Christian? In his 1744 Minutes, Wesley wrote, Question, is faith the condition or the instrument of sanctification or present salvation? Answer, it is both the condition and the instrument of it. When we begin to believe, then salvation begins, and as faith increases, holiness increases till we are created anew. What is Wesley's advice to those who seek holiness or sanctification by faith? Quote, Do you believe we are sanctified by faith? Be true, then, to your principle, and look for this blessing just as you are, neither better nor worse, as a poor sinner that still has nothing to pay, nothing to plead but Christ died. And if you look for it as you are, then expect it now. Stay for nothing. Why should you? Christ is ready, and he is all you want. He is waiting for you. He is at the door. Let your inmost soul cry out, Come in, come in, thou heavenly guest, nor hence again remove, but sup with me, and let the feast be everlasting love. Thanks for watching and exploring the thought of John Wesley with me. I'm Professor Wendy. Please take a moment to rate this video, add comments, and subscribe if you'd like to be notified when I publish new videos. Most of all, have fun learning!